Well, good morning everybody and welcome to a Sunday morning show starting at St Melian. And the reason I say starting is because we're on a bit of a tour this week. But we've got something pretty big coming up. You will have seen this week on the channel that Joe the Pro took on James. Oh my god. Oh, just Joe! And obviously they did their fantastic 13-14 club challenge at La Bretèche when we were out there in France. I hope you were quite impressed. If you haven't already seen that, please go and watch it because you'll be impressed with the shot making ability from both of them. Absolutely fantastic. But we're here at St Melian because this is the venue of the British Challenge, which is the Challenge Tour event that's going to be held here in August and the big match is all about qualifying for that challenge tour event. The big match between James Ruth and Joe the Pro going to be played at Travaux's this week however not going to be coming out on the channel for a couple of weeks because we want to put it together and put it together well but I thought today we'd have a little catch up with the boys out on the golf course here at St Melian. and we're going out on the Kerno course because they're a bit busy out here on the Nicholas course so I thought we'd have a catch up with the boys get to know them a little bit more get to understand where they've kind of come from and their excitement moving in to this big match. Let's get out with the guys. Right, Joe. Hello. Are you enjoying your time in front of camera on the golf course. Yeah, it's been good. I, to be honest, most of the time I don't remember. I know it sounds stupid, but I don't remember we're necessarily filming. I feel like yeah. And I think that's a good thing. It comes across more genuine. Like, I think we. I feel like I'm just playing with mates. you, Paul. Yeah, I'm yeah. not with mates and and yeah. But but it's been really nice. Yeah, got out, played some lovely golf courses. Play, and it's always nice playing with good players. It yeah. sort of brings your game on. You pick bits and but bits and bobs up don't you say so, yeah no I've really enjoyed it and, and one thing that like I don't know whether you look at this as well but I, I use playing on camera to kind of help my game in some ways I mean you've called me on times and said Dan I've just spotted this with your pitching and I've done a yeah, video yeah. on that uh, which will be coming out shortly but you know do you look at that as well is it is it another tool that you kind of use now it is I've got to be careful I mean you have noticed from the conversations we've been having today I've got to yeah. be careful I can get a little bit um, paralysed by thoughts. You start yeah. thinking too much and get stuff in your head that's not helpful. And and sometimes I think uh, there's a lot of people, players who just refuse to look at their golf swing, don't they, on camera? They I think. Do, yeah. um, I'd rather have somebody else just look at it and just tell me what you tell think. Me what you, and I'll, yeah, yeah and I'll deal do. with it because you can get paralysed. But yeah, so but yeah, I picked up a couple of little bits. You see, see things with putting. I've noticed my hands getting higher and higher over the weeks, which is putting toe down. So I'm trying to sort of rectify that but yeah you do pick up little bits don't you yeah match coming up then the big match correct Travos. i mean you must feel confident around Travos. i mean you've put, put some decent scores together yeah I'm always yeah it's always a, it's a good course for me so again we've been having this discussion is that speed is is a good weapon for me power so I'm, yeah I, I can hit it a long way with that what they say with great power comes great responsibility correct so you've got to um yeah so sometimes Maybe driving accuracy is not my thing. There is a bit more room around Trebo, so I like that. I've always liked that element of it. But there's also, from a creativity standpoint, you've got to think a little bit. There's bump, there's hills you've got to bump it up. There's wind you can bank it against to make it stop on. So I think you've got to be really creative around Trebo, which I, which I've always really liked. The difficulty is I'm, I'm playing essentially against John Rahm at the moment. He seems to be winning every week um, that he plays. But we can handle that. We can handle that. It's one. It's 18 holes. Uh, mano o oh mano. Is that what they say? Yeah. Why not? Something like <laughs> something like that. You just hit the flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From how far? 126. <laughs> James, coming off now back-to-back -back wins. Yep. Because you won the pro am. Yep. I mentioned Hampton shooting. Well, you were nine under par, eight under, nine under through nine? Nine through ten, yeah. Nine through ten. Yep. And then you've just gone and tidied up this week on the, well, I call it the region, but it's actually, it's an open series now, isn't it? Yeah, more of a national event. National yeah. open PGA event. And yep. you've tidied that one up as well. And Joe referred to you just a moment ago as currently John Ram. <laughs> 
Mr. Bean, sorry, yeah, Mr. Bean. And in, in some ways, you've just found a nice bit of form going into the season, which is perfect, is it not? Yeah, um, like last year and a half, I've probably felt like I have now. Uh, the playoffs was a big setback. Um, you know, just have one bad round out there, but managed to put that behind me. And, and then, that was for the playoffs, wasn't it? The PGA yeah, PJ playoffs, playoffs sort yeah. of qualifying for Wentworth. But, yeah. you know, normally you've got to another week to just sort of get that out of your system. But that was just a qualifier. But Travaux's kind of suits your game. I mean, you two... I think head to head around Travaux, both shooting very low scores around there. Does it does it does it set up for you? You enjoy it? Yeah, I love Lynx golf. Um, you know, mentioned Hampton last week would be similar in terms of, you know, the visuals of it. Um, yeah, it's just a it's a nice golf course and it's one you can kind of get going around, but it's also played so differently in the wind. Yeah. So it's different from day to day. But yeah, it's a it's a place I love going. It's just a, a nice place, whether it's a golf course or not. It's just a lovely part of the world. I grew up with James yes. because I remember him from a, a little... I remember playing in a Tiverton Junior Open, right? And he was about... The fifth major. The fifth major, yeah. He was about... So I was obviously the under, going for the under-18s and he was... Well, he must have been about 12 or 13, I would think, and he was really small, walking up the fairways, bopping it round. And I remember him shooting like level par or even one under par at the time for such a small kid, you know? So I remember him growing up. Where were you from? Bit of a mongrel, so born in London and then we ended up in the Midlands. Yeah. So I grew up playing my junior golf, Shropshire and Herefordshire. Okay. Then I went over to Worcestershire for my men's sort of amateur stuff. And that's when I was getting in the England squads and things like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, we ended up down in Bristol when I got married and then started at Celtic Manor where I was for eight, head pro. eight years. Didn't start as head pro, started in golf sales and then did my training there and okay. sort of worked, worked my way, way up. up to head pro. Yeah. yeah, I was there from just before the Ryder Cup to middle of 2018, I think, or early 2018. Yeah, um, yeah and now happy in North Devon, living the rural, the rural dream. That's better. Yeah, See, that's the shot, isn't it? Yeah. Challenge tour. Yeah. How many events or have you played seasons on the challenge tour? What? What have you done previously when it comes to yeah. challenge tour level? Played uh, played quite a bit. 11, uh, 2011, 2009 had a full season, yeah. and 2013 played quite a bit. Yeah. Um, the last event I played was 2018. Why didn't you keep it? That's probably a bit blunt, but why? No, what good... was it within your game that maybe didn't keep you on that tour? Uh, loads of things, really. I think it's more to do with like mentality in terms of. Uh, being comfortable in your environment, uh, the travelling, not really knowing that many people from down the area. Yeah. And then it just came down to a bit of trust in ability. I would have maybe a little bit of a lack of trust in the tournament that I didn't have in the practice rounds. In the practice yeah. round, I'd play pretty well. In the tournament, I'd maybe go, oh, maybe I don't want to go over there and not quite trust it. Whereas now I'm in a different position where I don't have that doubt. And I think there was just a bit of doubt in my technique, which you can't really have. And do you think you're that type of player then that needs, once you find a technique, um, that you can trust is that something that really you just zone in on or do you go with feel what is it a bit of both I've got the knowledge now of where my bad shots come from which helps okay. so yeah. if I do have a round where I'm struggling I've got a little you bit know more... where to go and search it yes rather than just searching correct so if I get a toe toey shot with a three wood or driver which I do occasionally I now know that comes from the club getting underneath where yeah. I didn't know where that come from so I would come more from the inside which yeah. is the worst thing I could do so I've got a much better idea of managing my game when I'm not swinging yeah. it how I want to now. And then growing up, England International, played a lot of England golf, didn't yep. you? Um, and then moving on from England golf, you then went in and, and won Order of Merit for the EPD, which is the German equivalent, equivalent of Euro Pro. Of Euro yeah, Pro. yeah. Um, you know, again, first couple of seasons as a pro, um, loved it. And then, yeah, had my first year on Challenge Tour, uh, got injured halfway through that, went to tour school after two months off and got my tour card. So it was yeah. a crazy couple of years, really. Just tell me, and I want to get this from both of you really, but strategy from coming from the qualifying venue of Travaux to then playing the Nicholas course. Very different golf courses, aren't they? They're similar in length, I suppose, aren't they? Probably in the card. 7,000, yeah. Yeah, similar in length, but you've got room at Travaux, so you can really um, you can really open your shoulders with driver. You don't really have to think too much off the tee. There's a couple bunkers that are well placed that you need to to think about but it's not as demanding off the tee as certainly here where there's going to be I mean you just played a clutch tour event didn't you, you said you hit 
maximum five drives a day, did you? Yeah. I think this golf course here, there are <coughs> places where Nicholas wants you to hit it. So he has a particular place on every hole where he thinks, right, that's where they should hit it. And if you take on a gamble from there, then there's so many risks. And if it comes off, you can shoot five or six under, but you don't have to be more than 10, 12 yards off line hitting driver and you've taken the penalty shot. So you'll see a lot of guys playing into bigger areas off the tee where they're hitting a long iron, which leaves them a slightly longer shot in. Uh, it's a fantastic risk and reward golf course. And do you both have like a go-to club? So let's say driver's taken out of your hands for whatever reason, yep. whether it's too tight or you just don't feel comfortable with it. Have you got a go-to club that you kind of grab hold of rather than rather than driver? Uh, yeah, that would be this one. That'd be still driver for you. Still <laughs> still driver. Driver. Yeah, driver's one of my favorite, but that, yeah, that club there, I've had it for about seven, eight years and yeah, carries 235, 240 and um, yeah, it's a club I rely on quite a lot. And that's the two iron? <laughs> two iron, yeah. I'm not a massive fan of three wood. See, I'm the opposite. I like, um, Stenson-esque. Stenson was always in my head of, I like chucking a three with down on the ground now and I'm getting on top of it in a squeezy, just a squeezy low three would that be my go-to when I'm a bit either anxious or the hole isn't as open as it could be. Last question, who would you say is your biggest scalp in golf? So Ooh. far, so far. So far, yeah, come Monday it'd be Jimbo. Gary Wollstonehome, I beat in the English amateur one year to get to the court finals, I think it was greatest probably amateur player certainly GB and I I would think beat Tiger Woods so that makes me presumably better than Tiger Woods isn't it so I beat the guy that beat the guy so yeah I'm better than Tiger um, and a few yeah a few tour players Andy Sullivan beat him in a county match singles good tour player but yeah I'd say Wollstonehome. Jimbo? Uh, so far Paul, so far Paul, Paul Hendrickson. <laughs> Paul yeah. Hendrickson. Oh. Anytime I beat Paul it's a fantastic scout for me. <laughs> well I hope you've enjoyed that little catch up with the boys and hopefully got a bit more of an understanding of who they are. I know you've got to see them quite a bit on the channel but getting an understanding of kind of what they're all about, where they've come from and obviously the goal of what they want to achieve uh, going into this big match next week which will be coming onto the channel at some point. We're going to put this together and hopefully it's going to be really well filmed, really well put together. The top production is what I'm looking for from this big match and obviously the ultimate goal, St Melian for the Challenge Tour. However, James and I are heading now to Hesketh Golf Club in Southport because the day after we play at Hesketh, we're playing a golfing days match at Southport and Ainsdale. So I'll see you at Hesketh. Well, here we are. Hesketh Golf Club, welcome. James and I out here today, this afternoon, playing a break pass series. You can hear the drone flying up over the top of us there. That's the course manager, Peter, and his team are out droning the golf course and caught up with him earlier in the clubhouse and some fantastic um, stories to be said about this golf course. And one in particular, a very good friend of mine I call Damien Mitchellmore, who is now at um, a very nice golf club abroad. He uh, started his PGA training round here. He was someone I went to college in the States with, and uh, I texted him as I came in through the gate with a little photograph and said, anyone recognize this golf course? And Damo obviously jumped on it. And um, yeah, so a few little stories there from, from Peter about the golf course. And uh, one of the great doctor's brother has something to do with this golf course as well. So we'll get into that as we get on round, but let's, uh, let's give you a little bit of footage from uh, Hesketh. So the interesting chat I had uh, with Peter, the course manager, he was explaining to me a couple of little stories which were original designs of this golf course was old Tom Morris's other son. You had Tom Morris Jr. but you had another a son and he actually was involved in the original design of this golf course. And then, can you believe it? The great doctor's brother, who I didn't even know he had a brother. He was involved in some of the design art here as well. So at Mackenzie Design, should we say, but it's actually the brother of the great doctor. Another fun fact for you. I believe the birthplace of the English Golf Union as well. 
and there is a tree and I will take you back to that tree which is up by the clubhouse in fact I'll take you to that tree I'll take you to that tree now back at the clubhouse and there it is James now what an interesting story this actually is <laughs> <laughs> if it didn't come from him I wouldn't have believed it <laughs> so in 1936 there was a certain Mr Hitler they decided the Germans to hold a golf event, international golf event, in Bavaria. Baden Baden. Where the English went over and played in the match. Well, the Germans were actually leading this event coming into the last nine holes, let's say. And the man himself, Adolf Hitler, was heading up to congratulate his team, trophy in hand. Present the trophy. And you would win a tree. That was the winning, that was the prize, win a tree and the trophy. Well, the English turned around and clawed it back and won the event. So, Mr Hitler turned around and gave the tree and the trophy to his third in command and sent him away to go and present this to the English winning team. And there, James... There it is. ...is the Hitler tree. Yeah. Planted, brought back to Hesketh Golf Club and planted. And there is the Hitler tree. I mean, it's a funny looking tree, isn't it? But what a story that is, James. What yeah. do you think about that? Absolutely fascinating. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Outside, this beautiful clubhouse by the putting green here. I didn't think this golf course would have any uh, affiliation with Adolf Hitler, but there we go. What a story. I mean, this channel is all about little nuggets of information when it comes to the game of golf. And I'm not sure many people know that story, but there it is. If you want to come and see the Hitler tree, which is what it's called, come to Hesketh Golf Club. Required. What's going on, Dad? This is unbelievable. Come up north and yeah, come up north and we get sunburned. Feel like I'm going to get burned. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but well done putting it on, though, Jimbo. Well, you've got to be careful. Very, here. very wise. Day two of our little adventure. Our little adventure up here in Southport. Obviously, we're at Hesketh yesterday. Today, it's Southport and Ainsdale, which uh, is a beautiful track. You've played it before, haven't you? Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. A delight. Like it's one of those golf courses that probably in some ways could be overshadowed fractionally by the fact that Hillside is next door, Burtdale is next door, but it shouldn't be, should it? Different level for me. Um, you know, you're not going to play many better links than here, and then you've got two, two sort of next door, which are just knockouts as well. They so. are, but there's so much history here. I talked about it um, previously, but 1933, 1937, Ryder Cups, you know, they've had some massive events here. There you go. There's the menu. Of, yeah. the, uh, of the Ryder Cup that they so have I was here. given this by the golf manager in the clubhouse, yeah. and they've got the menu for the Ryder Cup. They've got a Ryder Cup room, haven't they? And you yeah. can actually um, come with your group, and they've got like two Ryder Cups there from 33 and 37, and, then they, and you can sit and have the menu, have the meal that they had from that event. Roast surrey chicken with chipolata sausages. Oh, beautiful. Tell me then, you actually uh, do some trips up here, don't you? Yeah, we send a lot of people this way. Um, obviously, you've got Heskies around the corner. Yeah, played you that played yesterday. yesterday. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Royal Liverpool, you've got Wallasey down the road. Yeah. Um, people also do trips there and then they head up the coast to sort of Ayrshire as well. Oh, do they? Well, I suppose, um, what's it, three, four three, hours further out? from here? So Is it really? Much. Yeah. Um, it's the area. Presswick. The Bliss Hotel is a good hotel. Okay. Just Southport, yep. just around the corner. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we but do. What a lot. stretch! A stretch of golf courses that we got around here. Yeah. I mean, back to back to back here, and then you got Heskiff a little bit further up. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely stunning. Absolute golfer's paradise. And I mean, we're, we've just been walking down the last fair and we said, yeah. "Look at our shoes. It's not a no, spot yeah, not on at them. all. Uh, not at all. Fantastic. Absolutely right. Good to see you again, though, mate. Yeah. Good Thank to you very much for having us. Oh no, it's been fantastic. Had a busy week on the channel, but as you know, Golfing Days do sponsor the Sunday morning show, so a big thank you to them for all their support of the channel. Oh, so uh, if you want to go and check out their website for uh, some deals and little trips up here, then uh, make sure you do that. Well, that is another week done. I am absolutely exhausted. Heading back to Devon now. I uh, got about a five and a half hour drive to get me home. 
Hope you enjoyed this week's Sunday morning show. Great to catch up with both James and Joe. Southport and Ainsdale, Hesketh Golf Club, absolutely stunning and something that you should be looking to put on your list to come and visit up in this area up here in the northwest of England. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and I will see you again. I'll see you next week.